So I have gotten to the point where I'm doing the niche. And if you're not gonna do a niche in your shower, then you don't even need to watch this. But basically what I've done is I've taken out this middle stud. People freak out all the time since I first posted a video years and years ago. Oh my God, the sky is falling. Your house is gonna fall down. Trust me, your house is gonna fall down because you take out a middle stud, it's not gonna happen. Anyway, the middle stud goes out. How you get it out is totally up to you. I use a combination of three different things. Usually I use my skill saw cut it as deep as I can which will not get it all the way I use my my uh what is it uh where'd it go well anyway I put my tools away but I use my um reciprocating saw sawzall as I like to call it and I cut off any excess and you're probably off mm, maybe an inch or so you got to cut off the excess and then I go from that to a dremel to cut off little splinters and stuff like that inevitably there's going to be nails or screws on the other side yes you're going to cause a little bit of problem because you're going to pop that nail right through there as I did with that one and that's going to cause a little ding on the other side but you have to do it when you take out this because eventually there were nails popped in here so that's that then between the two studs because I have wires in here I cut out a little dado um, on both top and bottom so I don't have to mess with the wires and returning those through. What I'll eventually do so those wires aren't part of my niche is I'll put in another 2x4 just off to the side of here so that, yeah, it'll kind of encapsulate those wires and it won't be an issue. So it'll be about an inch and a half or so off from center, which it is now, but oh well, it is what it is. Um, getting all this level, uh, what else could I tell you? Yeah, so make sure your top and bottom plates are really, really tight when you cut them, and then you're getting it as level as possible, and you can adjust that. You can, so I measure from top to bottom on the inside, and I just see that I have the same measurement on both sides, and then I level it out, and it's pretty easy. Um, but the easiest thing for me to do before I even get to the level part, nail in or screw in. I use a nailer because I have a pneumatic nailer, um, but I use a nailer, and I do both my middle stud Bam, bam, a couple nails there. Bam, bam, a couple nails there. Then I have a, a, a board that's very, very mm, embedded in there to where I just knock on a hammer a little bit here and there in order to get top and bottom level. What I'm more concerned about, rather than being an eighth of an inch off, off of level because I can make up that when I start tiling, I'm more concerned that the distance is even. So yeah, if I'm 20 and three quarters here, I wanna be 20 and three quarters there too. That's as easy as it gets. Um, I didn't show the process because it's pretty easy. You know, like I said, you need um, a couple of tools to cut out all of that and cut your wood and put it in there and nail or screw in. Oh, and then you're not going to see this on camera, but after I nail a couple times in the middle and I get it level and all that stuff, then I very carefully, so I'm not disrupting anything, I do like a toenail, almost like a toenail with my pneumatic gun right into the side of there. Um, one nail is enough, and then I do it on the other side up there and up there and that stabilizes it and anchors it very well and that's how you build a niche i try and get my wall board since it's four by eight at the four foot mark as close as i can to my niche because i'm already pre-measuring about four foot up not knowing what my pan thickness is going to be ultimately but i do the best i can in this case i hit it right on um so you're just going to wrap this the next sheet is going to go on top of that and you're going to know exactly where and you do your measurement here all the, way, all the way up to there, write that down somewhere. Get a Dremel or a keyhole saw and cut out that extra piece of sheetrock. Put some caulking on the back of here. Put that board you just cut inside of there. You might have to trim it down a little bit and then wrap everything. <laughs> Thank you.
there's little areas around the niche that I always have a little boogering going on, but I don't bother chasing that and taking it off until the next day when um, all that mud dries up. It's much easier to scrape off than it is currently. So the way I get started on my niche, I always draw a center line. And as I said before, with um, Aqua Defense, a little harder to see only because I have light can you see the line with my pencil. But I start at my center, and because I'm doing the same mosaic that I'll eventually be setting on the floor, Mm, the math is relatively easy. Um, this is nominally 12 inches mm, from top to bottom. I try to make it 12 inches, but that's after all the top and bottom tile get set in. So once I've figured out my center mark, my first center of my tile, since we're at, at 6, right, then my center mark would be at the 3. And then everything else, left and right, gets cut. So a little 45 degree angle that I'm causing my ridges to be a little smaller than what this trowel size is. And then a little excess, I just kind of wipe off somewhere as I'm going along. Then if I have a need for that excess like down here, then I can just apply it very easily. On a larger tile, this process of doing with a trowel is a whole lot more important than it is on this tiny little two inch tile. It's not really necessary to do it, but the, the reason I do it specifically is so that I can get the same amount of thin set uniform that you may not be able to do with your six inch blade. So the trowel this ensures the consistency of how much sunset that you have. So at that point, I just grab my tile, which again, as I said, is very easy uh, to set it right on center, right? And you just push everything in there to where it goes in with the lines matching up. This, this backing on this tile isn't that great so I'm going to actually have to go off camera to make adjustments because I can clearly see that these lines are not lining up the way they're supposed to um, and then you're going to need a float because that's going to get all of your tile in there consistent consistently eventually so you can double check and I'm going to tighten that up and get those lines a little straighter when I go off camera because I can't do it with one hand holding the camera. But basically you're making sure that you have the same distance. So I have seven and three quarters exactly. And I have seven and three quarters exactly. So I know I'm on point. Is this blurry? I think this is very blurry. I'll have to adjust that. And then my top tile is I believe an inch and three quarters. So my top tile will be cut. Could you center up and split the difference between bottom and top? Yes, you could, but in the end it doesn't really matter because I'm going to have this bottom tile raising up with a slant on it, and that's going to cover up a lot more of the tile than it will the top, and so it'll look like it's basically the same cut from the bottom to the top. But the symmetry is just important to me. It doesn't matter how you do it, but that's basically how I do it, just in case you were wondering. And this is basically just doing the inside and out, as you saw earlier how how I made all these lines line up the best they could. Sometimes when you buy this mosaic on a mat, the mat itself on the tile on it is not lined up properly so you gotta pull off those individual pieces sometimes and do it appropriately. So this part is just getting my pitch. A lot of guys will build their niche or their bench or whatever, or even their curve with the pitch already involved. I don't do that, so I create my pitch, which you only need a, just a slight pitch going off of here so that the water flows off of it. I've already done from my pre-cut pieces, left front, so that I remind myself that this is left front. I put my little pre-pitch thing there, back over my tile. Just enough you have good adhesion. That's really all you need. And then you just stick it right on there with the little come off of the, your wall tile 
about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little less than that, just enough for some grub. Then, I want to put a level on that, make sure that it's level going across, which in this case it is, and then the pitch is already there, so I don't have to put a level on it, but if you had a torpedo level, you could double check yourself. So this bottom goes all the way up to the center row, because remember my line is right there. Then you grab your next one, do the same thing. I guess one of the reasons I don't show my work, because it's just like second nature, and I don't realize that a lot of people don't know how to do this. To me, what it seems simple, just by placing those in there, making sure they adhere really well, you just move them around a little bit, get that little eighth of an inch off of the back for your expansion. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect going across, but it has to be somewhat level. Well, I say it has to be, it doesn't necessarily have to be. What I'm usually concerned with is flush, that both of these, that I can't move my hand across and feel anything. So I feel slightly on, on this right side, so I'm just going to push down slightly so that now it's flush. Now going across so that I can feel it. And then if I'm level here, that's an added bonus, which I more or less am. Bubbles coming to my left side a little bit, which means that I've bumped up my... And so you can go back and forth and you can end up chasing your tail, trying to get it perfect, perfect, perfect. But here's another double check way. What you want to find out is if that measurement is on point. So you've got 12 and, a, uh, 12 and 5 eighths, mm, somewhere between 5 eighths and 3 quarter. Then you come over here, and you have the same 12 and 5 eighths, right between 12 and 5 eighths and 3, three and a quarter. So I have the exact same measurement on the left that I do right. And it's really that simple. And then you just do the same process with your top. That will be self-sticking. If your thin set is thick enough, it'll, those top pieces will stay on there. Let that set up for a little while before you put your side pieces, because your side pieces are going to get a bottom cut so that it slants along with your tile. And that's kind of the process. So I'm, as you can clearly see, I'm using screws to hold up my bottom pieces of um, bullnose. And later on, you can take those screws out when this dries up the next day, and you can fill in those screw holes with some silicone. So that takes care of that, in case that was a question. My thing is always about symmetry. So my bullnose first goes across here, unless you had a longer piece. Um, first goes across the center, and then the split difference gets over here. So I always do my corner cuts, my 45s as you will. I do those first, and then I figure out where my middle mark is, and then I cut off this part here. So I'll figure out this is about 12 and a quarter, so about six inches up from there, but I'm doing this cut first, as I did those two cuts first, and then I cut off any excess, so that I, I physically brought the piece in, and I went up to the corner edge where I know I'm gonna be, and then I just cut off the excess. Here, I'm not too concerned about this sitting flat up against the wall like I normally am. I want a little bit of a bump out because ultimately your wall tile, your field tile, has to come up and match this after the fact. So all of your bump out with your thin set has to be a little thicker on the bottom than it is on the top. So I intentionally, when I butter my tile, I intentionally put a little bit more thin set on the bottom here. I pre-thin set this, by the way, so that I have good adhesion. But a little bit more thin set goes at the bottom than it does the top. That creates my little bump out. I can feel under there that I have definitively about a quarter inch gap, and that quarter inch will be my thin set that runs down when my, my field tile wraps around it. So it's always kind of tentative as to whether or not it all is gonna match up perfectly, perfectly, and if you have a better way, then by all means, this is the way I use it by default. Um, as you can tell, clearly I have these top pieces up here, and the top pieces are there's different ways some people use tape to wrap around here. I've never found that useful because usually my tile is wet and or it's not going to be pliable for, or it's going to be, the, the tape will fall. So I don't want to use tape. So I came up with this method a long time ago. Sometimes if I have a scrap piece of wood, some thin wood, I don't want to use a long piece of tile, but I'll use a piece of wood that's about this long and I'll cut that and I'll shave these off, maybe whatever that quarter inch wood that I have sits on top there, straight across, then I'll just have a couple of these, you know, end to end, that holds up the whole top row. 
but you also have to see that all this is flush and with that wood there you can't always make that out um, so that's another hint that you want to make these flush and so the easiest way is to have these cut these are 12 and a quarter exactly and the bottom of here is a little bit less than 12 and a quarter but I'm doing it at an angle so that that I'm pushing up on these and making them flush and eventually you want to put a level across the top and make sure some, you were level to begin with and you want to make sure you're level afterward and if you're not then you can see your discrepancy under here and you make your adjustments according on the where the discrepancy happens to be so in other words i have a little bit of a gap here with my level so i can just bump that up a tad to get rid of that gap if i wanted to i'm going from bull nose to bull nose and i'm right at 12 and an eighth by the time i reach the bottom and bull nose to bull nose and i'm right at 12 and an eighth over to the left there you can see that so it looks like 12 and a quarter but it's exactly 12 and an eighth from bull nose to bull nose so that i know that i'm good with that um, and then another way you can also double check yourself is go from the ceiling since the ceiling rarely lies and you're at 29 watch me lie 29 and 7 eighths come over here and you're at 30. So I'm only off by one eighth of an inch. Actually, it's not even quite 30. It looks like a 16th that I'm off. So with that 16th being said, that's not bad. Almost regardless and despite what my level says, because eventually I want my top cut, you know, to go up there flush and the way it should be. So anyway, what I do is, again, center. I'm gonna find my center mark. It's gonna be about six inches. I'm gonna cut off from that point here. Um, and I put a square on it. This is just a rough line, but I'll put a square on it on my tile saw, make a perfect 45, and then from the edge of that 45, six inches up, and the same reverse here. I'll do a 45, six inches down, and then I'll end up with my cut or my grout line right in the middle. Um, so that's about all I can tell you about building in a niche. There's, there's not a lot of complication to it. I know I've probably made it more complicated for a lot of people out there, but any way that works best for you to do this. I usually prefer a schluter because it's a lot less work. This usually takes me about an hour and a half or so to build out a niche because there's so many steps involved. Um, but if you can shorten those steps, if you have a better way, then by all means, use that way. With all the tiles set and dry and cleaned off, you're cleaning off all the excess fin set that you slopped around, including all the cracks and everything. You know, you can come in with something. This this tile here, uh, the glaze on it is really, really thin. It chips relatively easily. Um, so you're careful when you're cleaning out the grout lines um, to use a small blade like that and not hitting the edges and the corners and stuff like that. The last thing you want to do is chip one of these. Anyway. The grout process happens now, so you're going to need a clean sponge. You're going to need your grout. This happens to be prism grout, which I like. It's at Home Depot. It's made by Custom Building Products. And the reason I like it is because it's, it's very flexible where you can use it on a thick grout line. You can use it on a thin grout line. You can use it on um, tile that you normally would use sanded grout on. It doesn't scratch. Um, it has instead of sand as its base product, it has silica. And so, yes, you could on marble or something like that, if you press really down on your float, and that's your float, 
It's just a rubberized handle that pushes all your grout in. And if you push really, really hard on, on a soft product, like with uh, marble or something like that, yeah, you could potentially scratch it, but you could still use it on that. You just don't press as hard on your float. Anyway, the grout process is pretty simple. You know, again, kind of boring type of stuff, but I thought I'd show it anyway. What I normally do, I push in as much as I think it'll take before I ever use my float. And the float's main purpose is to do kind of what I'm doing now, is to push all the grout down into the cracks. Um, and I do go over it with the float eventually, but I start out the process just putting the grout onto the areas I'm grouting first. Then I'll come in with the float and kind of screed it off at that point. So I'm not going to go through the whole process because, again, one of those boring things. But then you get your float and you just kind of at a 45 degree angle take off your excess. And once you've taken off your excess, then you can come in with the sponge yeah, and let it set up for probably about five or ten minutes. Um, some grout you can do that, some you can't, so be careful. Read your directions. Let, let, let your directions be your guide because there are definitely some grouts like Mapai where you don't want to let it set up for five or ten minutes because then it will stick to the surface of your tile and you'll never get it off. But that's basically the process. Um, right there, like I said, I don't want to bore you to death with all this. There's a ton of videos on how to grout that you can go and watch, see the process, but it's, it's pretty much that easy. And if you end up with little areas like this, you just pop in a little extra, push that in there, and then just go over it with the sponge again. And you're going to wring your sponge quite often. You're going to wring it as dry as possible, too. You don't want any wetness any excess wetness than what you've already introduced. Once we're done with here, and all these pencil marks, by the way, will come off with the grout as you're coming in to clean it off. So don't worry about penciling up your tile. I just use those so I know where my tile goes. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, 10, $15 a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, Please donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.